So Haman pounces on the opportunity to get rid of Vashti. And he tells Ahasuerosh, she has sinned terribly and you have to get rid of her. And Ahasuerosh was so confused. He didn't really want to kill Vashti. He loved her very much. But in the heat of the moment and being very embarrassed in front of everyone and certainly not being able to think clearly because he had consumed so much wine, he complies, he agrees. And they take her and kill her like a common criminal. And the party ends in disaster. Instead of the party being a joyful time and a celebration, it ended up being one of the worst um, events in Ahasuerus's life and the reality was that Ahasuerus actually was supposed to die he was Hayav Mita at this very party because he desecrates the kingdom of the Beit HaMikdash he takes all the things of the Beit HaMikdash and he makes a party with them all the vessels, all the dishes and he um, wears the clothes of the Kohen Gadol etc and it was all in order to show his rebellion against Hashem, that he believed Hashem would never build the Beit HaMikdash for the Jewish people again. And so he really deserved to die the same way Balshazar died on the night that he desecrated the kingdom of the Beit HaMikdash. But Hashem is patient with him and Hashem keeps him alive so that he should bear Daryavesh, meaning he should become the father of Daryavesh the second who was Queen Esther's son and would eventually send the Jewish people back to the land of Israel and build the second Beit HaMikdash. And Ahasuerus wakes up the next day in his drunkish, like still with a terrible hangover, his head is hurting him and he's all confused and he can't remember <coughs> Sorry exactly what happened. He remembered that she called Vashti, she didn't come. He doesn't remember exactly what happened. And he calls his guards and he goes to them, go get me Vashti. He wanted to discuss it with her, not remembering that he had her executed. And the guards are shivering and trembling and they don't know what to do. And they, very scared and very frightened, they tell him, but Ahasuerush, we can't get you Vashti. What do you mean, why can't you get me Vashti? And they tell him, because you had her executed. And he says, what? Under whose orders? Who would say such a thing? And they told him, don't you remember? Haman advised you to execute Vashti because she refused to come to the party. And they replay the whole event back to him. And slowly he recalls, he remembers. And he's devastated, he's horrified. He can't believe he got rid of his precious Vashti. And deep in his heart, he actually harbored a terrible hatred to Haman. He resented him. He couldn't believe that Haman jumped on getting Vashti killed so quickly. And it's ironic that he, he does make Haman second in command. Um, even though he hated him so much, even Ahasuerus was manipulated by Haman. Haman was a very manipulative person, meaning he, he pushed people around and he, he, he caused things to go around and he, he was able to get people to do things even if they didn't want to. But we're told that he was going to raise him to the highest of the heights only to drop him to the lowest of the lowest, which is what Hashem wanted to do to Haman too. And Hashem was enacting it out through Ahasuerus. And now Ahasuerus falls into a deep, deep depression. He's so sad. Now he doesn't have a queen, he doesn't have a wife, and he doesn't know what to do. And he doesn't want to remarry any of these princesses because he's afraid that they'll do the exact same thing that Vashti did. They'll shame him, they'll remind him that he's not really of royal blood. They'll remind him that he was just the stable boy. And Ahasuerus um, becomes more and more depressed and more and more frustrated. And he doesn't even want to see his advisors. He's mad at them. Why didn't they stop it? These old men, they would, couldn't wait to kill his precious wife, his bride. 
and he he becomes very, very dejected and very depressed. And if you read the Megillah, we see that it was the Ne'arim, it was the young, kind of almost like the young servant boys, the ones who would bring him his drinks and the one that would tie his shoelaces or help him dress, stuff like that. Literally not his top advisors, but the young boys who were there to always help him. And they tell him, Achashverosh, why are you so sad? You're king, you're the most powerful. Get yourself a new wife. You can choose from any girl you want. Don't go for these high and mighty girls. Choose a girl that's beautiful. Choose a girl that's humble. A girl that doesn't necessarily come from a very high um, royal family. Just take a girl that you think is pretty. And Ahasuerus likes their suggestion. And he, uh, now Haman children was very much part of what was going on. He wasn't yet second to the king, but he always had his nose in everything. He had to know exactly what was happening, and he had spies everywhere. Remember that he had 70 sons. He had something like 20 wives. He married so many women, and they each gave him children. He had many daughters too, but Zerash gave him 10 sons. The 10 sons of Haman that we talk about that got hung at the end of the Megillah, those were Zeresh's sons, but he also had other sons from other wives. So he had many, many, many sons and he was very powerful and he had his hand in everything. And when he finds out that the king is looking for a new queen, he goes, great, this is my opportunity. I'll make my gorgeous daughter queen. Nobody knows yet about this beauty competition because they said we're gonna keep it secret. None of the girls will know that you're out looking for a new queen. Otherwise, they'll all come running. Otherwise, they'll all, you know, want to become queen and it's going to be a whole balagan. It's going to be a whole mess. So we won't tell anyone. But we'll just go in the streets and we'll look for the most beautiful girl. And Haman, of course, finds out. Because we'll collect any girl we think is very pretty. And so what does he do? He, do, he goes out and he buys for his daughter the most beautiful clothing and jewelry and he sends it to the hairdresser and she has like a whole Eiffel Tower on top of her head looking very, very, um, uh, how do you say, outstanding. Like she stands out in the crowd and you could see her and puts flowers in her hair and makes her look incredibly pretty. Now whether she was very beautiful or not, the Megillah doesn't tell us, the, the Medrash doesn't tell us, but um, I think it's the Agatha that, that tells us this. But she, she does, he knows exactly who the guards and the king's inspectors are, or who is the person going out to try and find these pretty girls. And so he literally has her thrown in front of their face. Wherever they go, she follows them so they should notice her. And again, remember that uh, uh, that, um, Haman was very afraid because he saw in the stars, you could see through astrology, that the queen would point a finger at him and have him killed. He didn't know which queen. He thought it was Vashti and he figured, I got rid of her, so maybe now I'm safe. But he didn't know for sure. The reality he was correct. The queen would point a finger at him and have him killed. That was none other than Queen Esther. But he didn't know that. Again, remember that all these um, people who used like the clipot, like tummy sources, non, non holy um, powers to see the future, which we're not allowed to see. We're not supposed to see the future. Not only Hashem knows the future. But even those people who, who do that, um, they can't see clearly. They can see something, but not clear. So he decides. That it is gorgeous daughter. She's going to be the one to be the next queen. And imagine, not only that, first he'll be safe. She's never going to point a finger at him and have him killed. And on top of that, um, he's going to become so powerful as father-in-law of the king. Are you kidding? He's going to practically rule the kingdom. And at this point also, Haman had amassed a huge fortune. He was very wealthy, very far from his humble beginnings as a barber. And he takes his daughter and he sends her wherever these inspectors are going, she's there. Problem was, Hashem made her, I'm sorry, not very polite to say, 
But Hashem made her get a terrible, terrible stomach ache to the point that she soiled herself. She couldn't hold herself. She couldn't make it to the bathroom on time. And she smelled really bad. And wherever she went, the guards were like, oh, what's that stench? Oh, smells like the bathroom. Oh, go away. And they wouldn't even look at her. Not, not only would they, they, they not look at her, they wouldn't bring her in for the competition. Haman tried really hard to bring her in as a, for the competition that she should get nominated as the next queen. But she never even made it to the palace because Hashem made sure that she she um, was so ashamed. She was so, you know, she smelled so bad. And, um, and the hunt is on. They're starting to find and they look for one girl after another. And who hears about this is Mordechai. In the beginning, it was a huge secret. Nobody knew. But slowly, slowly, it became more common knowledge. And um, Mordechai finds out. And he says, Ive, Queen um, Esther, her Hadassah, her real name was Hadassah, who was his niece. Her father had died. He had raised her from the time she was a little orphan child. I believe her father had died at the time of the Khorban. Or maybe, maybe later. Because it's very interesting. There's many different opinions. Some opinions hold that Queen Esther was very old. She was 70 years old at the time when this happened. But that she still looked incredibly young or beautiful. Um, um, and some say that she was taken more because her midot was beautiful rather than her physical beauty. But I don't think we can um, digress from the words of the Megillah itself that claim that she was physically very beautiful. So, but regardless, um, Mordechai decides he's going to hide Queen Esther. And um, he didn't want her to be taken. And he hides her. Now, Queen Esther's beauty was famous. Everybody used to talk about it. She was an outstanding beauty. And um, she was well known. Whenever she walked in the street, people couldn't help but notice her. You know, all the matchmakers knew her. Or all the people knew her. And um, Mordechai hides her. Now, they find out, the guards find out, or the, whatever you want to call them, the, the hunting crew that had to go out to hunt and find the queen, find the beautiful, the, all the beautiful girls, heard that in Shushan itself, there is the most beautiful girl and they can't find her. There was a buzz on the street that there's this gorgeous, gorgeous girl, but they can't find her. And remember, they went far and wide, 127 countries. Ahasuerus had ruled over 127 countries. You know, as I told you, actually, originally, Ahasuerus ruled over something like 250 countries. But because he had stopped the building of the second Bet HaMikdash, the one that Koresh began, and then Amman's sons tried to stop it, and then Ahasuerus would not continue it, he wouldn't even look into it anymore, he lost half of his kingdom, and he went from 250, almost half, down to 127 countries. It was a little bit over 250, I think. 252 or something, I don't remember the exact number, but they, and they're going to all the far-flung countries to try and find this gorgeous girl, but they tell them, no, this outstanding, unique beauty is right here in the city of Shushan, and they start on penalty of death. They say, anyone who is hiding a girl... Um, can you hold the cat? What do you want, darling? The couch. I want to get my umbrella. Oh, your umbrella fell behind the couch? Okay, give me one second. Mommy's just finishing this challah. I'm coming. Um, you, you, you wanna, you, well, it's not baked yet. We'll make it together. You want to help mommy shake the challah? Well, wait, well, you have to wash your hands. One second. Go, go ask. Go take the chair to the sink and wash your hands, mommy. So, um, so, um, um, where was I? Sorry. So um, now it's on penalty of death. Anyone find, found hiding a girl and not allowing her to be found is going to get killed because they don't know what to do. They can't find her. And Ahasuerus is frustrated. They bring him one girl after another and he doesn't like any of them. None of them seem beautiful enough to him. None of them make him happy or feel good or make him feel strong or powerful or anything like that. And 
he is falls into a deeper and deeper depression until Mordechai realizes that he has to send Queen Esther out. And he realizes if it is by Hashkacha Patit, if it's Hashem's will that she should be taken to the palace, he's not going to stop it. On top of it, there was uh, the death penalty. So, so yeah, yeah, okay, you go sit on that chair. Sit over here. Thank you, darling. So, come, you can listen to the story. The one mommy told Shmer and Esti last night, you can listen now. So, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, why did you Mordechai that? lets Queen, it got squashed. It's okay, we're shaping it. Mordechai, and es, uh, Mordechai sends Esther out to the street to see what will happen. He wants to see what's divine providence. And true enough, within minutes of her out in the street, she gets noticed. And immediately she's taken to the palace. what happened to Queen Vashti? Queen Vashti had pimples and Ahasuerus didn't like her and he said, take her away. He didn't want her anymore. <laughs> now he's looking for a new queen. So... Because he didn't... Because he didn't have another queen. Yeah. Because more than I said, you don't have new... Okay, let me just finish this part of the story, okay? So Queen Esther gets taken to the palace. And you know what? We're going to stop there because that's where I'm up to with my kids. And the Zatashim will continue later. Maybe I'll tell them the rest of the story tonight. Thank you.